Are you struggling in writing your theoretical framework? Worry no more because we got you covered. Hey there loves, welcome back to my channel. If you've just hopped into this video, welcome. This is Jean Castillo and I release videos in which I share my know-hows on the nitty-gritty of English and research. If you want to reinforce your learnings on these topics, be sure to subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification bell so you wouldn't miss any of my uploads. In my most recent video, I discussed how to write the scope and limitations of the study, and I hope I was able to shed light on its contents. Now, we will move forward to the next subpart in Chapter 1, which is the theoretical framework. Based on my experience as a research teacher, this is the subpart in Chapter 1, which my students find the most challenging to write. So today, I am going to tackle its overview, contents, and how you're going to find the appropriate theories and criteria in making a quality theoretical framework. Of course, a sample theoretical framework will be shown at the end of the discussion. So without much ado, let's get the ball rolling. Theoretical framework serves as the backbone of your research work as it presents the theories that will support your study. It is composed of theories which are interrelated with each other, specifically one core theory and at least two support theories. The core theory is the main theory in which the claims of your study will be anchored on. Meanwhile, the support theories, as the name implies, backs up the core theory that you cited. You can have at least two support theories, but you are also allowed to cite three or more, provided that they support the main or the core theory and they are relevant to your study. In looking for theories, you have to understand first the essence and the purpose of your research. What makes it difficult for other researchers to find the appropriate and suitable theories is when they don't understand the core concern and the claims of the research. Of course, the theories should be relevant to the research work, which is the first criterion in looking for the theories. If you fail to understand what you intend to resolve in your research work, you will never be able to find the appropriate and suitable theories for your research work. Next, if you already found the relevant theories to your study, you have to read carefully and thoroughly its contents so that you'll be able to fully grasp its meaning. One of my observations as an English teacher is that the present generation no longer value the essence of reading. Some of today's students resort to just lifting or copying from internet or other physical sources. So they no longer want to read thoroughly the contents of a specific literature. But as a student researcher, you have to be patient in reading. You have to read for the nth time until you understand the contents of a theory or a literature. This is always my advice to my students that as a student researcher, you have to read comprehensively all the sources that they have found. Of course, you have to use reliable online and physical references responsibly. When I say responsibly, of course, you have to give due credit and acknowledge the source of your theories and literature. If you struggle in looking for physical references, don't worry because there are different online platforms or online libraries which you can utilize, such as Wiley Online Library, ResearchGate, Eric, Google Scholar, or simply Google. You just have to maximize the resources around you. Here are the criteria in writing a quality theoretical framework. First, it must be in paragraph form. The first paragraph contains the core theory. Each of the remaining paragraphs should bear these support theories. 
Each paragraph should specify the theory, the theorist, and the year when it was proposed, and what the theory is all about. In content and substance, it must be composed of one core theory and at least two support theories. The name of the author or the proponent must be stated. A concise description of each theory must be presented. The relevance of the theory and how it is used in the study should be explained. Here is an information sheet that you can use as a guide in writing or crafting your theoretical framework. So first, here we have the theory. Just write the name of the theory that you have found. And then we also have the author or the proponent of the theory. But do not forget to indicate the year also when the theory was proposed. Next in line is the concise description. So when we say concise, it should be short but substantial. One of the errors of some student researchers is that they just lift everything from their source. And I am telling you that should not be the case. So read first the theory and again, you cannot ask me how many times you need to read the theories. Read until you have fully grasped its meaning. Then you paraphrase the contents based on how you understand the theory. And lastly, you have to present how the theory is used in your research work. And now, here is the sample theoretical framework for your reference. That's it for today's lesson. I hope you learned a thing or two from me. If I was able to help you craft your own theoretical framework, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and turn on the notification bell to keep you posted of my lessons. Thank you so much for watching. Till next time, bye!